Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to day 16 of 22 days of prayer. We in here on time today, okay? All right, y'all. Glory be to God on today. So, as y'all know, we have been on this 22 days of prayer journey, and it has been blessing us so much, okay? So, let me just give y'all a brief run-through of everything we have already prayed and then what we are going to be praying on today, okay? So, um, good morning, Mama. Good morning, Poo Poo. So, for those of you who will be joining us for the first time on today, 22 Days of Prayer is a time where we have come before the Lord every single morning for the first 22 days of the year to seek the Lord's face, okay? To seek Him in regards to our 2021. And we have been praying topics um, of blessings for our 2021 of how we want this thing to go and all of the topics that we've come up with good morning well majority of the topics that we've come up with have been things that we have good morning things that we have done things that we have experienced things that we have gone through things that we have learned from our 2020 and we're bringing them over to our 2021 good morning everybody that's coming in good morning evangelist <laughs> Evangelist Lami Lam. Good morning, Kalia. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Chelsea. All right, so for those of you who are just joining, I just explained um, what 22 Days of Prayer is. And as y'all know, we pray scripture. So I just want to give a brief run through of everything we have prayed thus far, okay? Day one, we pray for healing. Day two, we pray for plans. Day three, we prayed for grief. Day four, we prayed for direction and guidance. Day five, we prayed for God's protection. Day six, we prayed for prosperity. Day seven, we prayed for peace. And y'all know we needed that day, okay? Day eight, we prayed for wisdom. Day nine, we prayed against depression. Day 10, we prayed against lust. Day 11, we prayed against fear. Day 12, we prayed for um, waiting on God. Oh, thank you, Brandon. Day 13, we pray for God's blessings. Day 14, we pray for divine connections. Day 15, we pray against distractions, which was yesterday. And today, we are praying on the topic of listening to God. Y'all, because we need to hear him in this season, okay? We need to hear the Lord in this season. Okay, good morning, Tyler. So as y'all know... Or if y'all saw my post yesterday, um, over the next couple of days, we will be having some special guests join with us on these morning prayers. So today's special guest is an amazing woman of God. I call her my evangelist because that's just who I see her. Like literally God has blessed this woman's life, has blessed the work of her hands. She is amazing. She is my prayer warrior, my sister in Christ. The person I could pick up the phone and be like, I'm, I'm going through something or I got issues. Or even if I just want to pick up the phone and laugh, I can call her because y'all, she's super funny. Like so funny. She's super funny and um, she keeps my spirit light. Like every time I'm around her, I just feel love, joy, and encouragement. She is a celebrity hairstylist. She's an actress. She also paints. She's an artist. She paints like on canvases and she also paints clothes, okay? This jacket, if y'all could, if y'all could see, she did this, okay? This is my book cover on a jacket. She painted that, okay? So without further ado, let me welcome the amazing, the wonderful, the blessed woman of God, Evangelist Lami Lam. 
that is my come on up in here evangelist good morning good morning uh, <laughs> wow <to> you <laughs> wow let me adjust this light man because uh hey. it's a new day bring your camera down a little bit okay bring it down yeah just a little bit i'm about to um right here lift mine up yeah there you go okay hello everyone good morning <laughs> good morning portia good morning <sighs> I got bullets in me, G. Really? <laughs> like, I got bullets in me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, I'm just like, and you know we coming in the name of Jesus, so. Okay, cool. I'm just, hold on. I need that. This was a gift from um Darlicia, man. It was an unexpected gift. <laughs> I know she got the uh the t-shirt that we had. I didn't know she had crew names. Yeah, like, she out here. She out here. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Everybody. Wow, day 16, y'all. Yeah, day 16. 16 is the number of love, God's love. And oh, y'all, praise the Father. My birthday in 30 days. <laughs> Good morning. You breaking up a little bit. Really? Just a little. Just a oh, bit. Uh -uh. Can, you, can you see me? Can you hear me? Is there I can see you. I can hear you. One moment. Praise the Father. Okay, we promise. Are you trying to get all distractions right now? Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay. I am day 16. Come um, on. Thank you so much for, you know, reaching out to me um, and, you know, asking me to come live with you, go live with you. Um, it's, it's truly an honor. It's always an honor to, you know, go live with you and like just be amongst like great people. Um, it's, it's truly an honor. And, you know, I've been away. I've been away with the Lord. I've been just, like, letting God be God. And I've just been, like, just saying less and just listening more. And it's 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 funny how the name of the day is listening to God. You know, when you reached out to me and you gave me the topic, I was just like, oh, yeah, this was my whole 2020. <laughs> this was, listening to God was my whole 2020 and being obedient um was my whole 2020 but but before i start i this song was on my heart i'm not a singer but he said sing a joyful noise so that's what i'm about to do this morning and then before you know we go forth with what we're gonna talk about and it goes like lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be your living sanctuary for you. I'm going to say it one more time. Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I just had to praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. I just had to like steal my heart and steal my mind because y'all going live is not easy. <laughs> it's not like it is not easy, especially like when you have a burden for it, like when God is calling you to do something, yeah. like it's not easy, but by the grace of God, we're able to do all things through Christ. Yeah. That's us. Um, so yeah. We're going to be talking about listening to God today and um, obeying God. And um, so last year um, in the summertime, I'm going to start off with like a little story. Um, last year in the summertime, which all, you know, 2020 was, <laughs> it was, a, it was real for a lot of us, you know, yeah. but it, it was necessary for what God wanted to do through us. Um, so last summer I was just praying and like fasting and like seeking God, like, 
yo God, like, what do you want from me? Like, who am I? Like just asking God all of these hard questions. And um, at the end of June, I remember one day I had did a 24 hour like water fast and it was on a Monday. Um, and I was just praying God and like, you know, seeking him and asking him different questions and just in my, in my quiet time. Um, and then I paused and I heard in order for me to flow control, gotta go. I'm just like, what? <laughs> in order for me to flow control, gotta go. I was just like, oh, God, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was, like, having my hands on things. I didn't know, like, I was in the way. But when he said that, I'm like, okay, God, like, what does this mean? So throughout the day, I was just in prayer. You know, I was, like, reading my word and, like, just really seeking God. And later on, so that that was that morning. So he was talking to me throughout the whole day. So mm -hmm. then later on that day, um, I was praying, and I heard seven days of prayer. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. I can do that, God. Seven days of prayer, I can give you that. And I was just like, okay, cool. And then like some minutes later, I heard seven days of prayer with the world. I was like, oh, with the world? Yeah. I don't know about that. Like, I don't know if I can do that. I don't actually, I don't want to do it. Like, I, mm -mm, I, I, I shied away from it because I, you know, I, I had all of these questions as it pertains to, like, my delivery, how I sound, how I look. Is, am I going to say the right thing? Does it do this? Is that just, I just had all of these questions. And when, when I heard that, I was just like, man, God, like, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm honest to God scared because we have all these people in the world that's like profound and like they're super eloquent, like with their words and like how they deliver and just all these different things. People that's been like doing this for a while. And he's just like, no, but what you have, I want to use that. How you sound, what you look like, how you deliver. I want to use all the, how you, everything. I want to use all of that. So yeah. all of that happened. And then I'm like, okay, Lord. So, what Portia knows this, and some of my friends know this, and some people know this, but a llama day don't do anything without confirmation from God. Like, I don't do anything without God telling me, this is what I want you to do. So I, I told him, God, if this is what you want me to do, seven days of prayer with the world, I need you to confirm it. Yeah. I need you to confirm what I just heard because that kind of sound crazy to me. Like, because this is something that I've never done before. So, y'all, God did not waste any time. He didn't waste any time. 30 minutes later, I received a text message from a friend like, hey, you know, we're doing prayer. Um, let, a, let me know if you, you're trying to slide through and it's at seven. And I was like, oh wow and that was my confirmation i pulled from what the message said to what i heard god say seven days of prayer 7 7 p.m and then he said pray i was like okay so then god started to like show me the people he wanted to be involved Portia, Portia was a part of it so yeah. um so god pretty much laid on me seven days of prayer come boldly to the throne Come boldly to the throne was my act of obedience. Come boldly to the throne was me listening to God in my quiet time and publicly putting out what he put on my heart for his people. So, you know, we came through, we prayed, we had different topics, um, and we bombarded um, heaven. And then we did volume two this past December. Go check it out. It's on my page. That was another act of obedience. So, y'all, listening to God is so imperative. Yeah. Listening to God is so key. We cannot, y'all, we don't know how to do this thing called life. We don't know how to move through this thing called life. We don't know how to talk through this thing called life. We don't know how to think. We need God. We need God's guidance in how to do this thing. And the only way you're going to know how to do this thing is listening to him. Yeah. You're not going to move. You're not going to move and you're not going to do something when you don't get instruction, right? So lately, God has been talking to me through acronyms. And, 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 and God is so cold. I'm like, God, you know, I'm a simple type of chick. Hey, Zainab. Hey, boo. Um, God has been, like, talking to me through acronyms. And, like, God knows that I, this year, I desire to live a simple life. So um, in the live, like my live, like last, um, the last volume of Come Boldly to the Throne, I was talking to um, Nick and for fear. 
false evidence appear real but he said no i'm gonna give it to you in a simple way face everything and rise right so <laughs> then i did a live with her um and he gave me an acronym for reveal and he said releasing every valuable evidence at last portia you know what he gave me for obey i'm ready <laughs> He gave me, obey is simply openly being emotionally yielded. That's what obedience is. Openly being emotionally, emotionally yielded. Come on. What Come. does it mean to be open? When you're open, you are without concealment. Yeah. You are uncovered. You're honest with it. Like you, you are being unashamed. Like you're being yeah. bold. It's without hiding your any facts or any feelings. That's what it means to be open. Like you're transparent, like you're uncovered. When you are being, this is a part of your essence. This yeah. is a part of who you are. This is your soul, your spirit. This is reality. This is something that's conceivable. And when something is conceivable, it's able to be understood or believed. This is you being capable of existence. And you know something, another part of that definition that I truly love, being is simply what's in your heart. Yeah. Being, was, being is what's simply in your heart. We're going to move on emotionally. Emotionally is to do something with your feelings. And it's to be sentimental. It's to hear it uh, is to have a heartbreaking. That's what it means to be emotional. When I read that, I was like heartbreaking. I'm going to touch on that word in a second. To have, your, to have your heart broken is to be emotional, to be powerful, to be moving. Like you are, there's like this intense feeling like when you are emotional. And yeah. lastly, yielded. What does that mean to be yielded? When you're yielded, you are surrendered. Yeah. You are submitted you are taking heed. You are allowing and you are going with the flow. I'm going to go back to that word to, to um, an emotional where it says heartbreaking. In order for you to obey, in order for you to listen to God, there has to be a breaking that takes place. Like your heart has to be breaking. And it don't even have to be in, in, in like a, oh my God, ouch God. And sometimes it is an ouch, but it's a heartbreaking because it says whatever a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? And they said that the heart is deceitful. Who can know of it? So if I'm in, if my heart is here and it's full of all these other things, I can't obey God because it's full of other things. There has to be a, a purge that needs to happen. Yeah. There has to be a breaking down that needs to happen. There has to be a movement of God in your heart that needs to happen. So yeah. when, when we are, openly being emotionally yielded it's like god not my will but yours come on in the lord's prayer it says thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it how is. am i allowing god's will to be done on earth yeah. by being obedient come on by listening to god by 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 taking heed on the things that he tells you to do I didn't want to do come boldly last year. I didn't even know that 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 come boldly was was I was that thing was lying dormant on the inside of me. But the thing is, I was willing. Yeah. Obedience come when you are willing. Obedience come when you're like, okay, God, here I am. Do what you want to do. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It was I gave God a difficult yes because I did not want to do it. I did not want to do it. I was uncomfortable. I had lack of confidence. I, I, I questioned how I sound. I questioned my delivery. I questioned, I just questioned everything about me. And he said, the very essence that's being, the very essence of who you are is what I want to use for my glory to be manifested in the earth. Yeah, hallelujah. How are you listening to God? Hallelujah. How are you allowing God to speak to you? Are you reading his word? Are you being in fellowship with him? Yeah. Are you having conversation about him with your peers? Yeah. Are you unashamed about him? How will you, how will you, how are you being a representative of God? 
and y'all, uh, Portia, when you said, like, you know, we're going to talk about, I, there were so many scriptures on obedience. I was like, God, what, which one I'm going to talk about? <laughs> which one I'm going to talk about? So I do have a list of scriptures as it pertains to obedience, but I want to share a story in the Bible, y'all. And y'all know this, y'all, if y'all knew we had come, uh, not come boldly, but taste and see what OMP, where we were just breaking down scripture and stuff like that. Like, I just love the word of God because there's, there's, there's hidden truths waiting to be unveiled, waiting to be revealed to us. Right. So I was reading Portia, I was reading, uh, first Samuel 15. Come on. And when I was reading it, I'm like, okay, we know this scripture obedience is better than sacrifice. We are, we always hear it, but I'm like, Lord, I need context to what this, this scripture right here, you know, um, means. So in that, in that, in that chapter, God gave Saul, not the Saul that turned into Paul, but this is another, uh, another Saul, like God gave Saul instruction and he gave him instruction through Samuel. He told Samuel to tell God that you are a point that like you are king. Like you've been chosen to be king. I've chosen you to be king. And because I've chosen you to be king, I want you to go pretty much kill all the Amalekites. I need you to take over. I need you to kill the king. I need you to kill the women, the children, like the goats, the cattle. I need you to, I mean, take over and murk everything, like wipe everything out. That was his instruction, y'all. Do y'all want to know what this man did? You want to know what Sam, um, Saul did? So Samuel, through the Lord, told Saul, this is what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Okay. Saul, like, okay, I got you. I can go do that. So he went to go to the Amalekites. He went over there. But before he went there, he told the Canaanites, like, hey, y'all, move out the way. Because if y'all if y'all don't want to get killed, you want to make sure you grab all your people and y'all get out the way because we're coming straight for the Amalekites. Like, we're about to, you know, wipe them out. So the, the Canaanites, they, they got out the way. They, they moved out the way because they weren't trying to get marked in the, in the midst of all of that. So they get to where the Amalekites is. And this man did not do what God told him to do. The Lord told him to wipe out everything. Everything. Nothing should be still living at this point. He went and took all the things that he thought was good in his sight. He took all the, he, he actually spared the king. Like he spelled the, the Melachite's king. Like his name is Agag. He spared him. He kept him. He kept all the plunder. He kept all the good things. And he, he wiped out everything that he thought wasn't good like the bad stuff and like he killed the, the children like all of that so he did all of that he got back he was just like oh yes i did it i did it you know I, I did my part i did what the lord told me to do and then the lord came to samuel like man i regret that i made him king oh jesus mm. that right there that thing hit me in my heart because i'm like man this is the the guy that the lord appointed to be king and now he regrets to, to, that he made him king because of his disobedience. Mm -hmm. So, Samuel, you don't want the Lord to regret you. You don't want the Lord to regret you. Man. So, Samuel, the Lord came to Samuel like, like, what the heck did this man just do? I mean, even when I was reading and listening, I'm like, dude, he didn't even tell you to do all of that. Like, what you doing? Like, I literally put myself in the word. Like, gee, what you doing? Like, that's not what the Lord told you to do. So Samuel, the God, the Lord told Samuel, like, I regret that I made him king. He did not do what I told him to do. He did not listen. He heard me, but he didn't listen. We're going to talk about that, too, the difference between hearing and listening. Yeah. Samuel went up to Saul, like, what? Let me actually read it. It said, 1 Samuel 15, 22. Actually, I need to go up a little bit. Let me go up a little bit. Because this thing, it, it, it blessed me so much. And I look, I, I'm like, okay, Lord. First Samuel 15. First Samuel 15. I was going to start at verse 22, but the spirit of God is telling me to go up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Look, I ain't even have my Bible and stuff. Oh, I was just flowing. Okay. It says... 
Blah, da, 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 da. Let me go. Let's start at. Let's start at. Her, huh? The the situation was saw did from that point on. Start at verse seven. Oh wow. Okay, I can I can. Let's do it. Let's read that. Come on. I was about to start at sixteen. Okay, verse seven. Okay, no, we're gonna start at verse ten. Okay. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Remember, y'all, it pays to listen to yeah. God. Samuel was troubled and he cried out to the Lord all night. When somebody else is troubled in their spirit because of something that you did. Yeah. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul had gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone down to Gilgal. Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what, did you? The man <laughs> was confused, okay? But Samuel said, what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spread the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. That's not what the Lord told you. He said to wipe everything out. He didn't say keep anything. Yeah. He didn't say that. Okay. Yeah. Stop, Samuel said to Saul. So at this point, Samuel is blue at Saul. Like, gee, don't talk no more. Like, just, just stop talking. Because right now, you're not making no sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, cause I'm just like, why you like what? But how many times? But how many times do we do that as people? We be sitting here trying to we we oh God told me to do this, but you go do other things. Negotiating with God, like He ain't clear instructions, and He like stop. I don't want to hear it. Just come just on. Stop. So He's saying stop. Samuel said to Saul, "Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night." And Saul, like, okay, tell me. Come on. And, and at this point, I'm like, you ready to hear what he said about you? <laughs> Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make your war on them until you have wiped them out. Those, okay, so for the people that didn't know, those in, in God's eyes, the Amalekites were wicked because they were out here like destroying the Israelites. They were out here like not like obeying and they, they were just out here just doing whatever. And God was against them. So he like, because they against me, I'm about to be against them and I want you to take them out. That was just a little nugget right there. So it says, make your war on them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? Y'all, disobedience is evil in God's eyes. Yeah. Okay. This is the verse that I was going to start at, at first, but here we go. Good morning. But I, it, so, then Saul, so then Saul said, but I did obey the Lord. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Now Samuel was like, okay, now you said too way much. much. <laughs> you said way too much, and now I'm about to put you in your place real quick. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? What are we talking about today, y'all? listening to God and being obedient yeah. to obey is better than sacrifice and to take heed is better than the fat of rams for rebellion is like the sin of divination they said rebellion is a form of witchcraft y'all yeah. when you rebel against God that's a form of witchcraft you're pretty much saying I'm God I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it how I'm gonna do it and arrogance like the evil of idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as king. Y'all, obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm going to say that one more time. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What did we say earlier obeying is? Openly being emotionally yielded. yielded. So if we're openly being emotionally yielded, 
whatever God tells us to do, that's what we should do. What we said, we don't, we don't, like you said earlier, we don't negotiate with God. Yeah. We don't sit here and try to say, well, God, um, well, maybe we should do it like this. So now you got, so now you in control. Yeah. So now your so now your world is in the palm of your own hands. No, that doesn't make sense. When you are obeying God, you are giving God a a a, a willfully yes. Yeah. You are giving God a yielded yes. You are saying, but, God, not my will, but yours. Yeah. What we do, only what we do for God will last. Come on. In here, Saul was sitting here doing his own stuff and not doing what God told him to do. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about hearing and listening. When you are hearing something, it says hearing is the act of perceiving sound. You mm -hmm. can hear. Hearing is you being aware of. But listening is taking action on what you heard. Come on. Listening is taking action on what you heard. Yeah. Only what we say, only what you do for God will last. Hearing is an awareness. Listening is taking action of what you are aware of. Yeah. Listening is giving your attention to something. Hearing, you just taking it in. Listening is you applying it. Yeah. That's what listening is. It's, it's, it's taking heed. It's taking action. It's moving on something. That's what listening is. Yeah. Huh. Saul heard, but he didn't listen. Because if he listened, he wouldn't be out here in the situation that he's in. Come on. When you listen, you obey. When you listen, you move accordingly to the will of God. When you listen, obedience is you being is you being disciplined. See, this is another thing that the Lord was telling me as it pertains to, to um, obedience. Your obedience has to be tested. Your obedience has to be tried. Your obedience. What, what was the come on, Lord, because I'm sitting here flowing. Your obedience has to be tested, <laughs> tried and trained. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that's what your that's what your obedience has to be. And then on top of that, I'm gonna throw in this little extra little T. Your obedient obedience, you have to be trusted with it. Yeah, come on. And even hearing that word trusted, it yes. says trust trusted. In order for you, in order for you to obey, there has to be a testing, a trying. Um, a training and that bonus T has to be trusted. Yeah. I'm thinking about now I'm thinking about Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and yeah. lean not on your own understanding and all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. We can break that down. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. That's hearing. That's hearing. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That's listening. listening. When you are trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning out on your own, when you're leaning on your own understanding, you're hearing, you're not listening. Yeah. When you're leaning on your own understanding, you want things to go how you want it to go. When you when you're leaning on your own understanding, you're all you like all in your mind. You move you like you're just all over the place. Yeah. But when you acknowledge him in all of your ways, he shall direct your path. Now that you listening, because you like God, I welcome you in. Yeah. I welcome you into my mind. I welcome you into my heart. I welcome you into my spirit. I welcome you into my soul. I welcome you into my affairs. I welcome you into my job. I welcome you into this conversation. I welcome you. Because Jesus should be at the center of everything. Yeah. We should not make a move. We should not, we can't, we shouldn't do until we hear what the Lord is telling us to, to do. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. 
speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Mm -hmm. And when you are listening, you're moving yourself out of the way so that his work can be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. That's what it is when you are listening to God. Hey, when you are listening to God, God can do great exploits through you. When you are listening to God. Let's think about that. There were so many stories in the Bible where people were obeying God. God told them something and they did it. They didn't reason with God. I'm sure they probably had some inner inner questions and inner thoughts like, man, like, I don't know what this going to look like or how this going to go, but I got to trust. Remember, that's a, that's that bonus T. Like, we have to trust the voice of God. Yeah. Sometimes we don't obey God because there, the trust is not there. There's a lack of trust. Yeah. There were so many people that obey God when it didn't make sense. Yeah. Abraham trusted God. Abraham obeyed God when God told him to leave his father's house and go to a land which I will show you. Abraham um, obeyed God when he said, go take your, your son, your one and only son whom you love so much and, and go sacrifice him. Yeah. Well, in that moment, his faith, I mean, his obedience and faith as well was being tested. It was being trained. It was being tried. Yeah. Joshua, the Lord told him to go walk around the, the walls of Jericho seven times. Like, but what? Well, hell on. He gave him simple instructions. Walk around it for six days. And on the seventh day, you walk around it and you make a loud noise. That's obedience. Obeying when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Obeying when it doesn't make sense. Let's keep going. Moses. Moses had to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Hey, glory be to God. I feel the spirit of God. He had to lead the, 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 the children of Israel out of um, um, Egypt because they were under the, the, the capture of Pharaoh. And he had to keep going to Pharaoh even when God was the one stiffening Pharaoh's heart. Will you yeah. keep going back to something that I tell you to do when it doesn't make sense? Yeah, come on. Hey, glory be to God. Come Jeremiah. On. And I, I'm Jeremiah. Oh, um, uh, he said it. I'm scared, God. I don't know what to say. I'm too young. I don't know what I'm going to sound like. I don't know what I'm going to look like. I don't know if the people are going to receive me. Like all of this. But he said before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Come on, come on. Hey, I knew you. I've chosen you. I've set you apart to be my spokesperson. I'm going to touch your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. put my words in your mouth. Yeah. So he started to train him. He said, look at this and look at that. Tell me what you see. He started to train his obedience. He started to train and, and, and test the things that he knew that he placed in Jeremiah. Yeah. That's the same thing with me. With coming boldly to the throne. God had to test me. He had to train me. I had to go through all of the things that I experienced, asking all of these questions, being uncomfortable, doing things that I didn't want to do. Yeah. And when you get to the end of yourself, you can actually obey. Come on. Because now self is out of the way. It's like, okay, God, here I am, Lord. Do what you want to do. That's why I met y'all now in my life. I don't care what, how people look at me. I don't care what people saying about me. I don't care. I'm in this place of being unashamed. Come on. You don't, people don't have the hell or heaven to put me in. So why should I be ashamed? Yeah. God is like, I'm not ashamed of you. So why should you be ashamed of me? Obedience. Yeah. Obedience. Obedience. Y'all, this world is fleeting. The things in this world is fleeting. The things in this world is fleeting. But the things of God is going to stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. The things God wants to be glorified in the earth. Yeah. Through our obedience, through us listening to him. Yeah. The Bible, I've heard this a long time ago. The Bible in acronym is basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah. These are instructions. The Bible is our manual in how to listen to God. The Bible is our manual in how to obey God. The Bible is our manual. It's our GPS. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. When you are in the car and you put an address in the GPS and where you're going, that, the place that you've never been to, you don't know the ways it's going to take you. 
Yeah. You're just trusting the direction that it's showing you to go. Yeah. That's obedience. You don't know what, what's, what's going to happen next. You just trusting the person that's driving your vehicle, which is God. Yeah. That's obedience. Obedience is saying yes and meaning it. Yeah. Obedience is actually giving God a hard yes and, 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 and meaning it. There's so many things that is on the inside of every single one of us on this live and will watch the replay that needs to come out. Now is the time of obedience. Yeah. And shout out to Brenda. She said obedience is the plug. It is. Yeah. Because it literally guides us and shows us in, 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 in ways to go. And even if you feel like you still, that's still you being obedient. Yeah. Hey, glory be to God. When you're sitting in the sand, be still and know that I am God. You're still obeying. Because you're like, God, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. Mm. If you don't move with me, I'm not going. If you don't tell me what's my next move, I'm not moving. Now, now you're like, God, you got my attention. Hey, now you like, God, you got my attention. Because now it's not about you. Mm. But it's about what God wants from you. Come on. Come on. And we've been saying only what you do for God will last. You're able to obey because you trust the character of God. Huh. You're able to obey when you learn who God is. You're able to obey when you've been in communion with God. Yeah, yeah, you're able yeah. to obey. You're able to listen when you've been spending time with God and you're making God your priority and not just something. I was taking notes and God said, your relationship with me is not a to-do list. Mm. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Obedience is a lifestyle. Yeah. When something is a lifestyle, it's a part of you. Actually, it, it is you when you're being obedient because now what's oozing out of you is what you've been with. Yeah. Now you can, you can stop. You can go. You can slow down. You can pop because you're, it's, there's this fellowship with God. Yeah. Obedience is being in fellowship with God. When you are out of obedience, when you are out of fellowship, you all over the place. Now you just move it aimlessly. But the moment you just pause and say, God, I need direction. Obedience will give you direction. Hey, woo, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Obedience will give you direction. And guidance. Will we and pray guidance for and vision. Come on. That's what obedience would do. Yeah. Obedience. 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 And I'm going to be honest, obedience is not an overnight thing. Yeah. Obedience is a process. Obedience, I'm going to add in listening. Obedience and listening has to be worked out of you. Yeah. It has to be worked out of you because, y'all, we are human beings. We are flesh. We are spirits covered in flesh. This flesh don't care about nothing but itself, but your spirit is always willing. Yeah. Obedience is willing, like we said. Obedience is willing. Obedience comes with a made up mind. Yeah. When you like, you know what, God? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of doing things my own way. I'm tired of doing things the way that I think it should go. I'm tired. And he's like, that's, I've been waiting for you to get there. Yeah. I've been waiting for you to, to, to let go of the things you thought you was in control. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you at the door. That's what God, that's literally what God is saying. I've been waiting for you at the door. You ready? Okay, come on now. Obedience. 
obedient obedience are you obeying god something else too when i was thinking about the uh the word obedience is partial obedience is still disobedience yeah when you are partially obeying god like saul did <laughs> where he partially murked the amalekites where he partially did the the instructions and didn't fully do the the whole thing it's still disobedience yeah god is not looking at how you partially obey him he's looking at what you what you're doing for him fully how you're being for him fully and even in the latter part of that chapter it talked about when, when Samuel told Saul, um, you did what was displeasing, what you did, what was evil in the Lord's sight. He was like, okay, I'm sorry. You know, I apologize. Let, let, can you come with me so I can go worship God? No, you, no, you got yourself in this. <laughs> no, you got yourself in this. And he was like, no, please, can you just come with me so I can go in front of the elders and just pretty much like worship God? He said that he did that. He only, he took some of the stuff and, and, and killed the other things because he was afraid. That's what he said. He was afraid of what the people were saying about him and doing. Are you going to, are you going to be obedient regardless of what others are saying? Yeah. Are you going to be obedient regardless of what others are thinking or perceiving of you? Are you still going to obey even when it don't make sense? We talked about folks obe obe obeying God when it didn't make sense. Nehemiah, are you still going to build a wall when it doesn't make sense? When you feel like you don't have enough people to build this thing? And even in the midst of that, even in the midst of that, when Samuel Saul had that encounter, he was like, you know what? The, the, the king of um, uh, the Amalekites was just like, whoo. So he brought him forward like, okay, whoo, I'm, I'm, you know, my life has been spared because he saw what happened to everybody else. And Samuel was like, no, you were out here killing Israel. Like you were out here doing uh, like just doing whatever with God's people. So because you did whatever with God's people, I God is taking your life. So he cut him up and murked him. And it had to, that had to happen because that was a part of God's word. That yeah. would make God a liar. He said, go kill him. God don't go back on his word. So even when you think, that your, your, your life has been spared because the person that was supposed to kill you spared you, you it's still going to be over with for you because that is a part of God's word. His yeah. word stands. His word stands. Noah was obedient to God even when it didn't make sense. He built an, a whole ark. Didn't know how to do it, what to do. He was just in tune with God he was so like just in tune with God man that's the type of relationship I, I desire I don't yeah. know about y'all but I want to be in tune with God so much that I'm literally stop go pause like I just right left straight back you know what I mean yeah saw the Paul obey God even when it didn't make sense he was on his way to Damascus when he had an encounter with Jesus and he said why are you persecuting me he's like I'm not persecuting you you are when you persecuted my people you're persecuting me come on and what he do he made him blind for three days y'all he made yeah. him blind for three days and he gave instruction to Ananias to come and speak a word for, for Saul for Paul going into Saul, he gave him a word. He said, I'm going to use you as my instrument. Yeah. Hey, glory be to God. I'm going to use you as my instrument. And, 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 and Paul wrote pretty much the whole end of the, 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 the New Testament. That's being obedient. That's being obedient. Okay, come on. Let's keep getting technical. Mary. Holy Spirit met, met her where she was. And told her, I'm going to impregnate you. You are going to carry the son of God in your stomach. She couldn't be like, no, oh, God, I'm good on that. <laughs> but she was willing. <laughs> hey, she was willing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you willing to obey? And then the greatest person of it all, Jesus. 
His whole life was obedience. Hey, his whole life was obedience. Yeah. And I get emotional talking about God. I mean, about God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, same thing. Like, I just get emotional talking about Jesus because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. To know that your whole purpose in life was to live, to die, so that we can be good. Yeah. That's enough for me to obey. That's enough for me to obey. I'm so undeserving, God. Yeah. I'm so flawed, God. I fall short of your glory daily, God. But you chose me. Yeah. You appointed me. Mm. You appointed me. You appointed me. Who am I? That you would choose me. Who is Portia that you would choose her? Who is the people on the line that you would choose them? That's love. Yeah, yeah. That's love. I think about that garden. That's love. When he was praying, and I always talk about this. I'm going to talk about this on every lap until I leave. He prayed and he was sweating blood. Yeah. He was sweating blood so that I can listen to God, so that I can have communion with God, so that I can obey God. He took lashes so that I can listen to God, so that I can obey God. He took the, the thorn that was placed on his head so that I can obey God, so that I can listen to God. He carried a heavy cross. Yeah. He died on the cross so that I can listen to God, so that I can obey God. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Father, Father, he even had a weak moment. Why have you forsaken me? Yeah, yeah. But he still died so that we can be good. He still died so that we can live. Y'all, I've come to the realization that my life is not my own. My life is not my own, so why won't I obey? My life is not my own, so why wouldn't I be yielded to God? I'm not here for myself. I'm not here for myself. I am here for the glory of God to come forth. Portia, everyone on this live and that will watch, we're here for the glory of God to come forth. When we take it off of ourselves, y'all, there's peace. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Is your mind stayed on God? If your mind is not stayed on God, you're not going to have peace. You're not going to be able to listen to God and obey him when he's instructing you to do something because your mind is not stayed on him. Yeah. Even going back to Proverbs 3, 5, you're leaning on your own understanding. That's not obeying God. When you lean on your own understanding, when you say, God, this is on you, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I trust you, that's obedience. Yeah. That's obedience. I mean, I, man, God wants our obedience. God wants our heart. Yeah. All, this, all the things that we're asking him of, like, God, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you show me this? Can you, like, all of that is going to come when you obey. Yeah. When you put God in his rightful place, yeah. when you obey God, Things will come. This life is not about the next car you're going to drive. This life is not about the next home you're going to move into. This life is not about how much money you have in your account. Like this, this has nothing to do with that. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, 
you will keep my commandments. Yeah. Keeping God's commandments is obeying him. Yeah. Keeping God's commandments is you being yielded. Like, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to move? What do you want me to say? That's keeping God's commandments. Obedience. Openly being emotionally yielded. Emotionally, it, it's not a sad thing. It's, it can be a sad, a happy, a joyful, a hard, intense. It's just you. That's obedience. Yeah. And I'm like, man, God, <laughs> I understand now. You just want me to obey you. Yeah. You just want my yes. You just want my yes. You just want me to be willing. All of these people that we named, Abraham and, and Noah and, and Joshua and Moses and Jeremiah and Nehemiah and, and, and Paul and, and Mary and Jesus, they were willing. That's all, that's, that's all that it was. Wow. I'm even thinking about a scripture um i was reading it the other day it was talking about i think it was in deuteronomy like 11 i believe 27 through 29 and it and it talks about it, it says no 26 it says look today i am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse mm. you will be blessed if you obey the commands of the lord your god that i am giving you today but you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from him and worship gods you have no that you've never known before. Yeah. Obedience is a choice. Obedience is you willfully choosing to yield and go in the direction that God is telling you to go in. Or to say the things that God is telling you to say. And you have a choice. Do you want to be blessed? Or you want to be cursed? Mm. Do you want to be blessed in obedience or cursed in disobedience? You choose. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. Obedience is not easy. But it's worth it. When you can trust the, the person that has your life in the palm of his hands. Obedience is being able to be, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, being able to be molded and shaped after his way. We are the clay. We, he is the potter. He should be able to shape us how he wants to. He should be able to guide us how he wants to. Even when it don't feel good, even when it don't look good, even when it doesn't make sense, he should be able to he should be able to test what he's shaping. Wow. Like a diamond under pressure. Wow. When a diamond is under pressure, the diamond are like, no, stop. Hold on. I don't want to be cut like that. No, it's being still and it's being shaped and cut how it's supposed to be. And it comes out and, beautiful. And it comes out beautiful. Yeah. You don't even see, okay, Holy Spirit is just dropping. You don't even see the true essence. We talked about being. You don't even see the true essence of a diamond until it has been through a refiner's process. Yeah. It has to be polished to know that it's going to come out like it's going to be glistening. Do you want to glisten for God or do you want to be dull? Yeah. Obedience. Obedience. Taking your will and relinquishing it to God. Taking what you have in mind and giving it over to God. Letting God be in the driver's seat. 
I always say, God, put me in the uh, path. matter of fact, put me in the back seat. Matter of fact, no, put me in the trunk. I don't even want to know where we going. <laughs> oh, not the trunk. <laughs> he'll, he'll pop it back open. <laughs> it's better than sacrifice. Stop just doing things just to be doing it and think that you pleasing God and mm. keeping certain things like, okay, God, I'm going to just give you this area. I'm going to just give you this area. He's like, no, I want all areas. Open. That's being open. Yeah. That's being open when you give God every area of your life, even the hardest ones. Even the ones you think that he can't handle. The sinful parts of you. Because we're full of sin. We're full of sin. But God. Amen. Obedience. I, I got so much more, but I'm going to just, I'm going to chill out. Because the Holy Spirit is like, wow. And I'm just sitting here like, have your way, Holy Spirit. You are wrecking us from start to finish. Because just like you, regarding Komboli, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I'm like, dang, 22 days in a row. That's about to test my consistency. And I'm a little iffy on that. That's about to test my hearing and listening from you. That's about to test my time with you. And then what if what I'm saying don't come out the way that, that you want people to receive it? Or what if I'm just out here doing this, like, and I'm just blindly walking, like, okay, you said 22 days, you want me to, you want me to, this is the criteria, laid it on me. Like, okay, we're going to talk about the topic. We're going to give our testimony. We're going to give the scripture. We're going to pray the scriptures. We want to make sure that the people are affirming themselves. Okay, he gave me the criteria. Okay, you sit that in my lap. He gave me the days. I'm like, okay, whoa. Like mind blowing. As as I continue to walk in obedience, it's just step by step. Okay, you want you you ready for a little bit more here now? You ready for a little bit more there now? My obedience has been tested. It has been tried, and he's training me. And now he trusts me to keep it going. And he keep laying it in my lap. And you want to know something else? Okay, so y'all know. Okay, so because this is like a full circle moment for me. So y'all know we doing 22 days, right? So first of all, she read 1 Samuel 15, and her emphasis was on verse 22. Let me tell y'all what 22 said. 22 said, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord. To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Y'all, Portia, my name, means offering. That's what Portia means. Portia means an offering in German and Latin, okay? And it says, he said, the Lord doesn't delight in burnt offerings. So it's just like, Portia, get yourself out the way because he ain't delighting you. Wow. You take that offering and you go and sit it down because that's not what he's asking for. He Whoa. asked for obedience. Whoa. And I wanted to give up on this so many times. I woke up every single day not wanting to do this. And then one day, I think it was like around like the, the ninth, 10th day, Lami had to text me and say, well, God wants you to know that that ain't about you. That's what we just read. He said that the Lord does not delight in offerings and sacrifices. That's Portia. Portia means oh, okay. I give you. It ain't about you. It's about your obedience. So get you out the way and sit your butt down. That's verse 22, okay? Not only that, I was born on the 22nd of the month. It's like all coming full circle, y'all. That's how I know I'm in alignment with what he has called me to do. Because he gives step by step by step. And he leads and guides. And as you begin to go, he starts showing you the way. Okay? He starts showing you what it is that you're supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to be doing it. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to say. He gave me this back in November. And I waited all the way up until December 31st to decide that I was going to do it. Yeah. To decide that I was going to do it. And it got on my side. And it about, mm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Y'all. <laughs> Let it out, G. Woo! But because of my obedience, 
Hey. Yeah, God, no, no, no. See, we have this moment right here where he's taking us deeper into what it means to listen to him. Hey. He has blessed me with such an amazing friend, a life partner, Olamide Kegi, Abamale Olamide Kegi, the evangelist, okay? The yeah. artist, the everything and more. Bless me with her for her to be able to use her voice on something that he has called me to do. These are all acts of obedience. Mommy could have said no. The crazy thing is when I asked mommy to do this, I'm like, you know, you, you might as well just go ahead on the 16th. It's going to be a month before your birthday. Let's just do it. I just said that. I just said that. I said, you know what? The topic could be listening to God. I said that. I said that in saying, this is what we're going to do. This is what you're going to do. Left it like that. Ain't said nothing else. Ain't said nothing else about it. A couple days later, we having prayer. We checking in with each other because we pray and read the Bible together, okay? We have Bible studies. Oh, taste and see with O and P. But, and she just go ahead and say, you know, um, I already marked in my calendar for the 16th. I'm like, dang, you remember that? Mm -hmm. I was just saying it. But now, instead of me just throwing something out there, lo and behold, this is something that God wanted to do. And she took it and ran with it in her obedience. And now has given us a deeper insight into what the Lord is asking and requiring of us. Jesus. As it pertains to listening to him. That's what I talked about yesterday when I talked about distractions. Like sometimes you... you you could be sitting out here, like I gave the example. If God has called you into arts and entertainment and you every single day going to go serve in nonprofits, you're doing a good thing. You're going to be of service. Yeah. But that's a good distraction. God didn't call you to that. He called you to something else. Do what he's called you to do. Y'all, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. So, Olama Day, you ready to take us to the throne of grace? You ready for us to come boldly? <laughs> <laughs> of grace? Are we good on time? And I pray on behalf. Oh, yeah. Good. I don't, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't said nothing yet. I think. I think my. Um. I don't got the hour limit no more. Okay. Are you double sure? Should we start a new one just in case? Um. Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. Okay. I said so many scriptures today. I like the little, little music. Okay, cool. Amen. You little, little worship instrumental. Praise him. <sighs> Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, you are welcomed here. Yes, you, you are welcomed here. You've been here, Father. You've been moving in our conversation. You've been moving through the live. You've been moving through the people's um, lives on the live and that will watch this, Father. We just yeah. honor you in this moment. Thank we you. put you in your rightful place. We put you above all. You are seated high, Father, with Jesus seated at your right hand. You sit high and you look low, Father God. You are a God of structure. You are the God of, of, of direction. You are the God of clarity. You are the God of, of, of love. You are the God of power. You are just God and God all by yourself, Lord. You are the great I am, Father. And we just surrender to you in this moment. We surrender our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our will, our plans, God. We surrender it all to you and we say, Lord, have your way. Father, forgive us for falling short of your glory, God. Forgive us, God, for doing things that we shouldn't have done and, and saying things that we shouldn't have done, Father God. Forgive us, God, for thinking thoughts that we shouldn't have thought, Father God. Creating us a clean heart, Father a clean heart and renew a right and loyal spirit within us, oh God. Lord, we want to be right and loyal in your sight, oh God. 
We want to be right and loyal, God, as it pertains to obeying you, Father. We want to be right and loyal as it pertains to following the steps that you've placed on the uh, before us, Father God. We want to be right and loyal, Father. We thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. We thank you, God, for how you're sifting through our hearts, Father God, sifting through our thoughts, sifting through our emotions, Father God. We thank you for your word is true, is living, and is active, Father God. We thank you as it says, God, in Hebrews 5 and 8, but even though he was a wonderful son, he learned to listen and obey through his suffering, Father God. Help us to suffer with you, God. Help us to walk with you, Father God. Help us to hold your hand, God. Teach us, God, how to be more like you, Father. Even as it says in James 1 and 22, God, help us to prove ourselves as doers of the word and not just hearers of it, God. Help us, God, to internalize the things that you want us to, 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 to know, Father God, so that we can move according to your will, Father God. Yeah. Father, we need you, God, like the deer pets for the water, God. So our souls long for you, Father. We need you, Lord. Father, even as I'm praying right now, I'm reminded of First uh, Peter, um, I believe, 1, 13 through 16. So it says, so then prepare your hearts and minds for actions. Stay alert and fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that is coming to you. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, a greater measure of grace will be released unto you. As God is obedient, as God is obedient, children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you follow when you didn't know better. Instead, yeah. shape your lives to become like the Holy One who called you. Yeah, For the God. scripture says, you are holy because I am holy. Yeah. Father, purify us, God. Yeah. Glorify us, God. Unify us, God. Bring yeah. us into right standing with you, Lord. May we obey you, God, in every area of our lives, Father God. May we obey you, God, in, in, in the ways that we move, God, and the ways that we communicate, God. May obedience be the very essence of who we are, Father God. We decrease as you increase on the inside of us, God. We become less and less important as you become more and more important, Father God. We mm. need you, Father. Yes, Lord. We need you to show us how to do this thing called life, God. We need you, God, how to, to order our steps, Father God. You said the steps of the righteous are ordered, Father God. So, Father, we are trusting you to order it, Father God. May we submit, God, to your will. May we submit to your plans. May we submit to you, to your spirit. Holy Spirit, continue to move. I'm believing, God, by the power that is invested in me that every single person that is on this live, every single person that will watch this, Father God, will yearn to be obedient, God. They will yearn to be more like you, God. They will yearn to walk with you, Father. They will learn to yearn to, to trust you, Father, and be willing to be trained, Father God. They will yearn. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, teach us your ways, God. Teach us your ways, oh Lord. May our ways become your ways, Father. May our thoughts become your thoughts, Father God. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Lord. That's another T. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Father God. Yes, God. For we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, we are flawed beings, Father, and you know that, Father God. But we yield ourselves today, God. We become openly available to you, God. We become openly available to the plans and the promises of God. We become openly available, God, to the instructions that you are giving us, oh God. We become open, God. And as we become open, Father, fire of the Holy Spirit consume us, God, like fire shut up in our bones, oh God. Lord, I'm believing, God, for the resurrection of your spirit, God, to stand up on the inside of all of us, God, until we are doing the very things that you've called us to do, Father, that we will not be settled in our spirits, Father God, until your, your will come forth, God. May we not be settled in our spirits, God, 
until we're moving how you want us to move yeah, 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 until yeah, we're yeah. talking how you want us to talk until we're thinking how you want us to think father god consume us right now lord the things that is in the way, God, of your presence, God, show us, Lord. Show us the things, God, that is in your presence, God, that is prohibiting us, God, to be obedient, Father. Show it to us, God. Show it to us, Lord. Show it, God. May we not be comfortable in being disobedient, Father. Yeah, may we not be comfortable in being disobedient, God, because your word says when we're operating in disobedience, we're literally children of Satan. Those are the sons of disobedient people that are walking in, in wayward ways, in ways that has nothing to do with Christ. So, Father, check us, God. God, check me, Lord. Check me, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Check me, Father, until I am obeying you the way that you want me to obey you, Father. Burn up everything that's not like you, Father God. God, give us new desires, Father God. Give us new appetites for your word in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give us new appetites, Lord. Give us new appetites in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Until we are hungering and thirsting after obedience, Lord. Until we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, you said in your word that if we obey you, Father, that you will be our God, Lord. And you, we will be your people, God. And you will do everything, God, as, 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 you, as we ask you to do, Father. And then it will be well with us, God. We want it to be well with us, Lord. We want it to be well with us, Lord. Lord, every, everything, God, whether it's a job, whether it's an opportunity, whether it's our family, whether it's our self, Father, show us, God, how to be obedient, Father. May we not be quick to, to, to grasp the next great thing in the name of Jesus because it looks great, but it's not you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Only what we do for you will last, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth, sweep through this life, God. Sweep through the homes in the name of Jesus. Sweep through the cars, Father. Sweep through the, the mindsets in the name of Jesus. Sweep through the heart postures, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Until we're bleeding with obedience, Lord. Until we're praying with obedience. Until we're saying, God, not my will, but yours, Father God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Rabba Shanda Labaso, in the name of Jesus. Hey. hey. Hey, glory be to God. Hey, basanda la basa. Can God, begin to worship God where you are. Begin to worship God where you are. Begin to tell God, I'll give you my yes. Yeah. I'll give you my yes. I'll give you my yes, Holy yeah. Spirit. Even when it don't make sense, I'll give you my yes. Mm. I'll give it to you, God. I'll trust you, God. I'll trust you, God. I'll trust you, God. You created me, God, so I'll trust you, God. Even when it gets hard, God, I trust you, God. Even when I'm being trained, I trust you, God. Even when I'm being tried, I trust you, God. Even when I'm being tested, I'll trust you, God. Yeah, I'll trust you. Hey, Rabbi Shandalaba, in the name of Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Father. Obedience is all about you. Obedience is all about you, God, being glorified and being purified and unified in us. That's what obedience is. The way, Holy Spirit. Hey, oh, hallelujah. Obedience is your wind, God, being pushed on us, Father God, to do the very things, God, that you called us to do in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory be to God. Hey, 
Hallelujah. The wind of God is coming to your homes even right now in the name of Jesus. Those yeah. that are desiring to be more obedient to God, the wind of God is coming even right now in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is obedience in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, glory be to your mighty name. Ha. Glory be to your mighty name. Hey, Shababa, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Some of you right now, hey, ba 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 ba, can't even contain yourselves. That's the glory of God coming on you right now. Come That's on. the glory of God because you're saying yes to his obedience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, glory be to God in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Do what you want to do. Say it. Tell, him, God, tell God, do what you want to do in my life. Do what you want to do, even if it don't make sense. Because the thing is, your spirit, your flesh has to come into subjection of your spirit. So when you are decreeing and declaring the thing, that's what it is. Father, do what you want to do in my life. I desire to have a heart of obedience. I desire to move how you're telling me to move. I desire to speak how you want me to speak. I give you permission to. That's another thing. Giving God permission to come in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do what hey, you want. Give no, no, no. God permission to come in. Invite him in. Invite him in. Ha. Invite him in. Invite him in. He wants to dwell with you all. He wants to dwell with you all. He wants your temples to be his place of refuge. Yes, he wants your temple to be a place where he can call it a, a, a consecrated and a holy sacred place. He wants your, your temple to be his sanctuary where he can move and, and do what he want to do. The word says to move and live and have my being. May that be our portions in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pray over every single mind, every single heart in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 right yeah. now, I'm believing for a sensitivity, God, of obedience, Father. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. And no weapon fashioned against any one of us on this live and that will watch shall prosper. No, no weapon. weapon. No weapon. It can form, but it will not prosper. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. And every single tongue that raises itself up against you in judgment shall be condemned. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is fighting for you. The Lord is after you. The Lord is chasing you. Don't be that one. Don't be that one where he got to look over you and go to the next person because you don't want to be obedient. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. Even when it don't make sense. God doesn't make sense. Do it. Yeah. Do what he's telling you to do. Yeah. You will see what's attached to your obedience. Y'all, there are lives attached to your obedience. There are blessings that's attached to your obedience. In the name of Jesus, obedience will take you far. Hey, Rabba Shanda Labasa, obedience will take you far. It will take you to places you've never been in. It will allow you to see things you've never saw. Mm -hmm. And it will allow you to be a person that you didn't even know that you can evolve into. 
obedience. So God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Bless we honor you. We magnify you. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, exalt yeah. your holy name. Hallelujah. And we say, settle on us, God. Yeah, settle here, God. Hey, yeah. settle on us, oh God. Here, God. Yeah. Settle on our obedience. Settle on our yes. Settle, God, for the things that you've instructed us to do and not the things that we've created in our minds that, that you didn't tell us to do. Come on. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Lord. Amen. And amen in Jesus' name. Ah, uh, y'all, yeah, Baba Sanda. Mm. The Lord loves you guys so much yeah. that He will carve out time for you to hear from Him. Yeah. How mindful of He of how mindful is He of us? How mindful. Listen to God, y'all. Don't just hear. Don't just perceive him, but actually listen to him. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to him. When you're listening to something, you are taking action on the things that you are aware of. Because hearing is just being aware of something, but listening is taking action on what you are aware of. Yeah. Be patient in obedience, y'all. It is not an overnight process. Yeah. Let it be worked out in you. Let it be worked out. Let it be worked out. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We were all created for such a time as this. Yeah. Now is the time of, of getting closer to God because that's something that he longs for. That's something that he longs for. Yeah. Jesus was able to be obedient to God because he was just, God was all, it, it was just in him. It was just in him. And that's my desire. I want to be obedient to God. I want to do what he's telling me to do. I don't want to I don't want him to have to find someone else to be obedient because of my disobedience. No. Obey y'all. Openly be emotionally yielded to God. Let God be God. Let God be God. Let God be God. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Thank you. And that's the affirmation. Let God be God and obey. Let God be God, comma, and obey. And obey. We have reached the affirmation portion <laughs> of this live. And she just gave y'all an affirmation. She said, let God be God and obey. Um, I also would like to share something with y'all real quick that the Lord just laid on my heart. I know this scripture, y'all. It's in John 14. Mm. It's in John 15. He love me. Yeah. And 15. Okay, so look, y'all. John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So Jesus wants us to know that, you know, we, we talked about a lot of things in this. We talked about listening. We talked about obedience. But then we also talked about God's love for us. When Lami let us know, like, okay, the Lord died on the cross for you. Like, he didn't want to go do that, but he did that for his love for you, right? He loves us so much. He gives us so much grace. He gives us so much mercy. He blesses us with so many things. 
He consumes us in his love daily. And he only asks us one thing to show us that we love him in return. And he said, if you love me, you're breaking up, Portia. Can you hear me now? Am I good? I'm still breaking up? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Just Are we a good? Little. Yeah, I see your screen going a little fuzzy. Yeah. But if y'all can hear me catch this, he said, if you love me, obey what I command. She said, say it again and read it again. Okay. John, 15, John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So our obedience, y'all, is telling God we love him too. Because he loves us. He shows us grace. He shows us mercy. He chose us. And Jesus only required one thing for you to express your love back to him. And that is obedience, y'all. So because we are talking about obedience in this moment, remember, not only is your obedience going to get you from point A to point B in God, but your obedience is also allowing God to know that you too love him. Yeah. Okay. Love God back in your obedience. In our affirmation today, let God be God. And obey. let God be God and obey. When you when you feel a little iffy, and you know what I'm saying, and you spending time with God, and He beginning to start dropping stuff on your spirit, and you just like, well, God, what you mean? I gotta do this. Let God be God. Obey. Speak it over your life. Speak it over yourself. Okay. Speak it over your 2021. We are going to let God be God and obey. Yeah. Give God a I love you back, God. I love yeah. you too, Lord. And I'm going to show you in my obedience to you. Okay? Glory be mm -hmm. to the Lord Jesus. Lami, thank you so much. You're welcome. Glory be to God. Thank you so much for your yes. It's, it's, I was, I felt so unprepared this morning. And he was like, just show up. Just and show up. You done showed up and let the Holy Spirit move and what he done showed out. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and the he, funny thing is when I, at the beginning, at the beginning, I was like, oh, I got bullets in me. I was prophetically speaking that because I ain't know what was about to happen. <laughs> I love you too, Poo Poo. We love you too. Amen. Glory be to God. Up. This has been amazing. Thank y'all so much for taking this journey with me. We have been here consistently for 16 days in a row, y'all. We got six more yeah. days up until the last day, which is the 22nd day, which is also my birthday. Shout out to the Lord for making me be born on the day. Okay. Amen. God bless, you. God bless you. May God continue to, like, you know, guide you through, you know, praying, just praying is not easy. You know, so I just I'm praying that God would, as you've been pouring out to us, that God will pour back onto you like 100 fold, <laughs> that he will fill you back up in the places where you may feel depleted and empty. I pray that he will continue to pour, 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 like, overflow you, like top you off in the name of Jesus. Jesus and I'm excited. Thank yeah. you. God bless you. May he pour back into you for the things that you have poured out onto us that you do so daily. You pour into me every single day. <laughs> like, it's not just a, this is not just a one time thing. Like you're consistently pouring into my life, consistently pointing me in the direction towards the cross. And I am forever grateful for you, Rami. I tell you all the time, God placed you as a gift in my life and you are the gift that keeps on giving. It's like God wakes up and be like, all right, Rami, how are we about to bless Portia today? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just me. You are a blessing in my life. I Amen. Am you. I'm grateful to have you, okay? I never thought that God would send me somebody who literally me in this walk and points me towards him no matter what, who prays with me, who reads with me, who laughs with me. Like you were all around, friend. So I'm just grateful for you. God bless you. God bless the work of your hands. God bless all of your God bless your Comboli volumes. God bless your Ooh. artists. 
God bless your, your painting. God bless your, your hair, your, your works, okay? God bless your business. I, I, I speak that home for Adana Lewa into your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless your business. He's going to do it, Lami. Amen. He's going he's gonna to do it. Everything that your Amen. heart desires, he's going to do it. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, <laughs> I feel the blessings of the Lord bring into you right now. Amen. Amen. You Amen. are an amazing woman of God, an evangelist, okay? A prophet to the nations. And we honor God Amen. on today. Y'all, this has been good. We have been blessed, okay? So go and be blessed and blessed and blessed by God himself on today. May something, Lord, may something good happen to these, your sons and daughters who are right here. Come on, iron shopping in iron. That's what I'm talking about. But go, go and be blessed on today, y'all. Spend Amen. time today allow him to tell you something to do and you just do it and be like okay this is how obedience work test him <laughs> test him in that okay that's good oh your mind every single time hey y'all give god, give god your heart give him your give heart him your, he loves each and every one of you he loves you you do not have to do or say or be anything to receive his love he gave it to you freely now go and love him back in obedience, okay? I love you, mama. I love all of y'all that are on here. Bye. Love y'all so much. It has been amazing. Y'all go and have a blessed day. Amen. Bye.